My dear students, again today I have to take you up a very important topic and that topic is Kawasaki's disease. We also call Kawasaki's disease by an alternative name and that is mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome. So let's split this word mucocutaneous lymph node. So as you are aware, in this disease what would be affected would be the mucosae, the cutaneous, the skin and the lymph nodes. So all the three systems would be affected. Now later on we will go what other systems are affected in this disease. So first of all you have to remember that it is a multi-systemic vasculitis and question asked is what type of vasculites it is a vasculites which affects the medium-sized arteries so very important that the middle-sized arteries are affected and the basic mechanism is t-cell immune activation so we have got this, these t-cells and stimulation of t-cells occurs so it, it can be an immune mediated disease. Now, the manifestations, basically the disease of children are the presence of fever. And in addition to fever, we have conjectivites. And the conjectivites is usually bilateral and non-exudative type. In addition to that, we have got some features like cracked lips is cracking in the lips as well as the tongue which is reddish we call it as the strawberry tongue in addition there is the presence of rash and discumation and discumation of palms and soles the skin of the palms and soles discumates and there is the presence of lymph adenopathy and what type of lymph adenopathy the cervical lamp so these are the features any child presenting with these features are labeled or should be evaluated for Kawasaki's disease. Now after that we have got very important extra manifestation and that is the cardiac manifestation and the cardiac manifestation is in the form of coronary aneurysms. So, in this age group, we don't have many diseases causing coronary aneurysms, but Kawasaki's disease has got a predilection towards coronary arteries and coronary aneurysms are a manifestation seen in not all cases, but 20 to 30 percent of children with Kawasaki's disease have got these coronary aneurysms and care is to be taken about this complication. It's not only coronary aneurysms, the cardiac manifestation which occurs in Kawasaki's disease, but there is this myocarditis or valvular regurgitated lesions occurring in addition to the development of arrhythmias later on. Now, Kawasaki's disease in addition to the clinical manifestations would be characterized by leukocytosis increased C-reactive protein levels. But important fact is that Kawasaki's disease can also be associated with increased TNF levels and the increase in TNF levels directly correlates with the development of coronary aneurysms. So in addition to all this, there is this important thing that we have to remember that we have to give drugs and the drugs to be given in Kawasaki's disease are intravenous immunoglobulins and intravenous immunoglobulins just decrease the rate of formation of coronary aneurysms so they should be given in patients with Kawasaki's disease in addition a very unusual fact about the treatment of Kawasaki's disease is that the Kawasaki's disease is treated by aspirin Normally, we do not give acetylsalicylic acid to children because of the 
development of Gray syndrome. But Kawasaki's disease is one clinical condition in which we give aspirin to the children. So these are some of the very important facts about Kawasaki's disease being a systemic vasculite, vasculites affecting the medium-sized arteries also called as the mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome as a result of T-cell immune activation characterized by development of coronary aneurysms. The diagnostic criteria of fever, conjunctivitis, cracked lips is to be remembered and the treatment by intravenous immunoglobulins and aspirin is to be kept in mind. Thanks a lot.